My fellow sheep, election season is upon us. Are you one of the 12% of Americans who still approves of our government? Then we need your help to force the other 88% into compliance. Our democracy depends on it. We're an organization called Citizens Against Too Much Unfettered Freedom, or CATMUF. CATMUF is a bipartisan flock of sheep whose goal is expanding government until nothing else remains. Because the government is here to help you. How can you help CATMUF help you? By only voting for candidates dedicated to expanding government. It's easy. You don't need to study the issues. No matter what a politician says when running for office, they're all dedicated to expanding government. And make sure you tell all your friends and family to vote for more government. Here at CATMUF, we don't care if you vote Democrat or Republican, as long as you vote for candidates committed to growing our federal family. CATMUF. Because folks just aren't smart enough to handle real freedom. Yeah, it was it was bad. Yeah. People people up here have really been on edge. I've seen people do do stuff at gas stations, like cutting each other off and yelling at each other, and people in traffic. And you know, if <clears throat> if, if folks would just relax, they wouldn't have to worry about so, it. So act, acting more like New Yorkers, basically. Do, uh, do acting regular. more like New Yorkers. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's pretty accurate. Oh boy. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 123rd episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a BIPCAT no government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this. Especially you, Ethiopia. At BIPCAT.org. What in the happy Halloween? What does Ethiopia have anything to do with this? I'm so confused. <laughs> Uh, they're a government aren't they there's an ethiopian government yeah sure um okay anyway yeah uh, we're back they can't use our content <laughs> yeah we're we're back i'm jeremy joined as always by dave who's just i don't know what he's talking about as usual and andre what's it's up gonna guys? Be a different state every week yeah oh, okay um and uh <laughs> we have returned and and this week we have joining us once again our friend merrick van landingham hey merrick what's going on brother Hey guys, glad to be here. Woo! Thanks. Woo! Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's uh well, Thanks for uh, coming on on uh, such short notice, friend. Oh, absolutely my pleasure. Always a good time. Yeah. So, and you know, it's it's nice to have you here after you know, you, you brave the storm down there in uh in, in Florida way, right? Well, I mean, Yeah. Didn't didn't hit yeah, you guys it, too, as, as bad as expected, right? Or something like that. Yeah, it it was a little bit sporty. Um, but it was not as bad as it could have been. Um, but uh, I sat down yesterday, somebody was asking me and I counted them up and because I've been here on the Gulf coast my whole life. And I, I counted that, uh, Irma was the 20th tropical event that I've been through in the last 40 years. So I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of getting used to wow. it at this point. <laughs> yeah. Another day, another dollar. Yeah. I mean, there, there were others that got it a lot worse than we did. But, you know, you, you it doesn't matter. You do the same prep. You do the same thing no matter what. If it's headed your way, you're like, ah, all right, you know, get your stuff ready. And here Hunker we go. Down. Yep, yep, yeehaw. Yeah, well, you, you were, you were planning, even before it changed direction, you were, you were planning on staying anyway, right? Uh, oh, yeah. Ride it out. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit different, I guess, than some people in Florida. All my stuff is here. So I don't need to leave where my stuff is. Uh, and a couple of you guys have actually been here and you know that the house is pretty secure. So it kind of makes more sense for us to stay where we are, you know, shelter in place, as they say, uh, instead of mm -hmm. trying to run away and being stuck in a hotel with one tenth of my stuff, we should just probably be here. And also people tend to come here when there's storms in Florida and you know, we, we've been hosting folks for the last week. Uh, they just left yesterday. So, yeah, it was quite the event. Well, that's it, awesome. It's, it's been a very stressful out, week, but uh, yeah, quite the event. 
Yeah, well, you, I mean, you mentioned me, you know, I mean, it makes sense, obviously, if you, you, I mean, I know me, I'd rather be with my stuff than stuck in a hotel room. But when you said that, my first thought was, well, if you can even make it there, because a lot of the stuff I was noticing, uh, just watching, you know, the little bit of, you know, the the, the, the coverage of it that I did was uh, just the insane traffic jams, which, you know, are pretty much caused by the combination of government's idiot roads and regulations and forced evacuations. Uh, yeah, a little bit. So uh, both both government created problems, um, but you know those were the people I actually felt the worst for, especially when the when the when the storm when I saw that it first shifted gear when it first shifted direction because we were actually tracking it live on the air on the fiends uh, when it happened. Mm -hmm. Sh uh, Shane Buell and I. And uh, Shane was doing updates and he's like, oh, it just changed direction. And, like all I could think of is like, oh, all those poor people who were like forced to evacuate are all stuck in a tr on a traffic, uh, stuck in a traffic dram trying to head north right now, trying to get out of the way of the thing are now going to, you know, are now going to be directly could be directly in the path of it all over again. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, thanks, government. It's like they <laughs> left where it wasn't going and went they directly <laughs> to. Yeah. Where it went. Well, in a lot oh. of ways, that's exactly what happened. Uh, th those forced evacuations on West Florida, uh, and, and I, I called this days and days ago, uh, that later in the season, these things tend to track further west than what they're calling, and they just keep going and keep going, and then they shift it and they shift it, and every 12 hours you look at the model and it's moving, it's moving west, and I'm like, guys, this is going to keep moving west. Well, nobody listens, but what the hell do I know? Uh, and then all of the people on you're the not a meteorologist. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm not a. I'm not a climatologist. I was just gonna say you don't have. One, I was. Just, I was just gonna say that you don't have one of those fancy degrees, man. Come on. All right. Nobody's gonna take you uh, yeah, seriously. Not. Not that. Degree, I need an but... appeal to an authority, or I cannot believe it. Mm -hmm. So when that happened, uh, it, of course, it was pandemonium. Uh, you know, sp state-sponsored pandemonium, which is how we do things here. And they told There's everybody. There's a great to show leave. title for you. State-sponsored pandemonium. <laughs> <laughs> Got to write that yeah, down. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> um, and within hours, because I was trying, I, I'm, I was hosting people who were here uh, who had evacuated from both the Bahamas and from Southeast Florida. And wow. Because it looked like it was going to just whack them. And we had to make mm -hmm. a decision very early on before we knew. And it's like, ah, no, nah, let's get out. You know, come here. And once you're here, you're fine. And so everybody did that and we're good. Uh, and then the thing shifted west and then they did this mandatory evacuation. Well, within 24 hours, uh, all of I-75 in the turnpike was a parking lot. And the Fiend storms, phone. Fiend the storms phone. beating down on them. And now they're all trying to get out at once. They're running out of gas. Uh, there's no hotel rooms. I mean, it was just a real... Uh, uh, hmm. How do I say this? Fluster like cock. A, a shit yeah, yeah. Fluster like a, cut, like a yes. monkey humping a football. And it took people <laughs> about two days just to get up here. And once they were here, they were so weary and tired that they didn't want to go any further. I had a lady call me at midnight uh, right when the storm was coming up. She was trying to check into one of our units and the elevator wasn't working and she's just screaming at me because she's been in the car with her husband, you know, telling her how bad her driving is and three kids in the back for, you know, 20 hours and just she's at the end of a rope and I felt so bad for her. I couldn't get mad. You know, she's she's yelling at me. I'm like, that's it, girl. You yell at me. You just take that anger out on me. That's cool because, you know, it don't it don't get any better. So. Yeah, it was it was bad. Yeah. People people up here have really been on edge. I've seen people do do stuff at gas stations, like cutting each other other off and yelling at each other, and people in traffic. And you know, if <clears throat> if, if folks would just relax, they wouldn't have to worry about so, it. So act, acting more like New Yorkers, basically. Do, uh, acting regularly. more like New Yorkers. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's pretty accurate. Oh boy. <laughs> I, I feel your pain then. Makes I mean, me glad I live out in the uh, somewhat country. I, li I live it every day, but you know. I, well, I, I you know, and, and today I went to the grocery store and there's a big line and everybody's freaked out and you can tell. And uh, the, the cashier is freaked out. And she's talking about storm stuff and all that. And I just leaned over the counter. I gave her a hug. I told a joke in the checkout line and made everybody laugh. And then the whole 
the whole scene changed. Everybody just like took a breath and relaxed. I'm like, all right, that's it, guys. Just relax. It's cool. Okay. It's cool. Yeah. Everybody be cool. <laughs> How's Fonzie? What's Fonzie like? He's cool. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah it, it's well, been quite the uh, ride. Wipe you out. Now, uh, we got a lot of wind and uh, it, it, it really beat me up a little bit, but nothing that I would complain about. I mean, that uh, wouldn't bode well for the future civil war between the capitalist and the socialist, man. <laughs> mm. Van Landingham well, uh, getting knocked out by a hurricane. No, thank you. Nah. Yeah, we're not. That's not going to happen. It's the fight of the century. But, yeah. But, you <laughs> know, Van Landingham the versus in, the hurricane. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> There's your actually, next movie. That actually does sound like a pretty good title match, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Just Mark like, Van Landingham like, versus the hurricane. Yeah, it, it was Sharknado was a 4. Long, wrestler. As long as you don't shoot into it. Oh, was I not supposed to do that? Um, so um, <laughs> what's you said you wanted to talk about uh, what's going on with Jonathan at all? Uh, do you want to talk about that at all? I, I would. I just don't know how much he wants me to talk about it. But it, it, it's just uh, amid all of this stuff, I've been watching – What's happening among a lot of my friends who are really getting beat over the head by the state, and I don't want this to turn into some, you know, anarchist circle jerk or anything else, but... How dare you, sir? How dare yeah, you? But, but this has just been going on, and I'm watching it over and over and over again. I mean, he's got court tomorrow about custody of his children, and somebody who he doesn't even know it's somebody it's a guy who's a judge whose daddy was a judge who's a big cop supporter and, and the whole bit is going to be overseeing this and as you guys know he's been pretty despondent about this whole situation because this has been going on for two years and he hasn't been, yeah. a, been able to see his children he doesn't have a lot of hope about it and, and today i was talking to him and i'm like well maybe you shouldn't i mean maybe it's just going to be a bad deal so um yeah, yeah i wouldn't mind talking about that just a little bit i mean i, I don't want to bring it down i don't want it to be negative or anything else but it it just mm. it seems like over Man, and over the, and the, over the again the family my friends, courts. well but before we hold on before we bury the lead too far Go here, ahead. i see poor andre keeps dropping in and out hopefully he can uh, i think he's having some internet issues but um before we bury the lead too far uh we are talking about uh Merrick's co-host uh, from the uh, Radical Logic podcast, Jonathan, who we've he's, he's we've had him on here. Yeah, we definitely had him on here before. Yeah, he's been um, on here. Yeah, we have so before. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry if I was burying the lead. No, no, no. I just, I just. No, didn't. he's a really, really cool dude. Really, really cool dude. Yeah, I no, I'm a, I'm a big really fan cool of his dude. too. He was, he was instrumental in helping. Great with, singer with my situation, and I, I totally feel for him. But uh, you know, it's one of those things that, unfortunately, I, I know it all too well, and uh, you know. There's not much you could, especially when you're the the, the guy, usually the, the guy and the dad in the situation, there's often not a lot you can even do except try to fight Correct. it. And uh, you still like, you're behind the eight ball from the beginning. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And the, this isn't his first rodeo either. So he no, knows I know. where he's at. Yeah. And, and the fact that I've just been seeing it happen over and over to, to so many of my friends that, you, you know, one day you come home from work and now your entire life is in the hands of the state and there's yep. really nothing that you can do about it. So I can understand him being despondent. I, I talked to him on the phone today and I said, look, man, one day, if you end up in that clock tower with a rifle and a box lunch, at least I'll understand why. <laughs> oh man. Because they, I mean, <laughs> think about it. And I, that's kind of a joke. It's a backhanded joke. I get it. But, uh, you know, to some extent, how far can you push somebody over and over and over again? It's like I've done nothing to you. Oh no! Right. What is what? Is, what, uh, what, what the what? modern family courts in America are set up to increase single motherhood because they understand that single mothers rely on the state and welfare more. Okay, broken families rely on welfare more. This behooves the state and its judges who work for the state to do this to take these children away from the father. I'm yeah. not going to argue that point, to be honest with you. I, I think that that's pretty accurate. Yeah. Uh, and I that's mean, just, unfortunately, the system he's caught up in right now. Uh, the only thing you can really hope for is that the judge will show favor and not be um, 
No, it's, no, you just you can you can hope you can hope for the judge to show no no to little bias. Like that's actually what you're hoping for. <laughs> you don't want any favor. Yeah, hope, just... hope and faith. Maybe yeah. that's about it. It's, yeah, uh, but I think after you've gone through it for the the third time, as in his case, that you're just going to start losing faith. Oh no, I there like is, yeah. There, there is no faith. I haven't yeah. I don't. I like like I said. I don't. I don't really blame yeah. him for not having it because I mean I only had to go through it once. It's we need private arbitration. We need private no, arbitration. I think. I think. I mean. I know the state is so intrusive that they claim ownership of your children. So I mean, that's why you're pro- oh, most man. likely fa- forced to go to yeah. the, the state courts. But it would be nice to have before you go into a relationship to have some kind of prenuptial agreement of uh, if we ever have children, we will always handle all of this in private arbitration if we split up. But the state won't because recognize that. Yeah. I, I know the state won't, but sometimes you run into someone who is level-headed that you break up yeah, with but for the that's... wrong reasons, you know, or for the right reasons. Yeah, but that that's you still run the risk as as that's the the the, the end point though. What what Merrick pointed out is you know because the state doesn't recognize it, it doesn't really do you much good because once things end. They usually don't end very well <laughs> um, for most people, for you know, for a variety of reasons. And then it's like, well, there is no, but it's not really binding because the state won't find it binding, so it still could be used. You know, you can still get. Believe burned it or way, not, I got a friend who's forced to pay, a, you know, a ton of money for uh, child support, but uh, the 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 mother's really really cool uh, about everything, and she put all of it into account. And an account, and all of that money is going into a big account that only the dad gets to choose what it's spent on, and uh, every cent of it he knows where it goes. So, like, well, there's yeah, there's ways to handle it. Oh you know? no, of course there are. If you know, if if people are willing to, but but it but it, it you're not going to give someone you know. It's like, hey, Schmeagle, do you want the Ring of Power? And just lay it right there on the ground. Hey, it's right here. All you got to do is pick it up. It like, what do you think is going to happen? You know. He's going to turn into Gollum. Well, inside Lord of the Rings baseball for everybody. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. But well, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mark. No, I was was just going to say to to kind of to tie all of that together um, with with him going through that. uh, I've just been looking around at other friends and, and what I've been noticing is that I can't point out one single friend who is not currently going through something akin to that, it be it uh, an impending court case or an impending custody case <laughs> or a divorce or a something. Yeah. And it, it seems like at every turn, uh, the, I'm glad we're just acquaintances. Yeah, the, the state the state is there <laughs> in your face. And even if you wanted to do it your own way, uh, they don't. They don't necessarily let you do that. So you know, when I'm talking about these things to people, I try to address it from that point. I'm like, hey, why don't you know? It's like the old Doug Stanhope joke, you know, about marriage, where you know you're like, hey, baby, we got this thing going on, and it's so awesome, and I love you so much. Uh, we need to get the state involved in this shit right here. <laughs> <laughs> who yeah. who does that? Well, nobody. But that's the way it happens. And people um, that are getting married for the wrong reasons. Well, okay, yeah, whatever, whatever it may be. But you know, consensual. Relationship. You gotta realize that everything, a- everything the state does is a is is pro- byproduct of a demand. Whether it's a contrived demand or a, a brainwashed, implicit or tacit demand, it's still there. Like when the people say no, it doesn't happen. And when no, they say no long enough, they fight it, and it's you know it goes away. Okay, that that's correct and that's true, but uh, as long I, as they rule, that's all they care about, you know? They can break whatever they want to get implemented into a dozen pieces and put it in place and the people will never know. So All right, cool. That's so, all they do is listen. So uh, hang on, dig this, man. Uh I had a conversation today with uh, a guy that you guys know, Shane Radliff. Yes. And, really good guy. Uh yeah, very very solid I can't speak highly enough about him. Uh, And he was asking about conscription. What would you do Mm -hmm. if the government came for, or basically the the premise started with, do you think that they will reinstate conscription, meaning, you know, the draft? Mm -hmm. And, you know, what would you do if they do? And I told him, I said, all right, I'm on record and have been for many years. I've said this 
hundreds of times that if you show up on my doorstep, excuse me, for my children, uh, you'll die in the door. And I know that that sounds horribly hyperbolic and, you know, you're like, ah, but but it's really not. It's one of those, okay, where is that line in the sand? And for me, that's kind of it, that they they won't let you get married without putting their hand in it. They won't let you get divorced without getting their hand in it. And even if you don't do any of those things, they might just come and knock on the door one day and say, yeah, you got those boys in there. I need them. I'm like, why? I'm like, well, they're going to go die over here in uh, shithole of Stan, but uh, we need them. <laughs> and I understand that when I make this argument, how hyperbolic it sounds, and I really don't want it to. But if you just break it down, what is it that you can do that doesn't get that, that they don't want to get involved in. Sorry, I'm still bumping the mic here. I, I talk with my hands. Uh, <laughs> you know, same thing with the hurricane it's here. Very, People are very, running very out of water low. and propane and gasoline and all the things that we need. Well, the state of Florida has these price controls so that I mean, I, I sat there in the grocery store and watched people walking out with two grocery carts full of water. How mm. much freaking water does a human being need for a couple of days? Do you need 48 cases of water? I don't think so. No, but, but the rationale is, is, is they're going to use it regardless. No, I get that. Yeah, what about the guy in line? Early as a sucker, you know? What, what about the mom what in line thinking. behind them who actually does have three kids who, who can, doesn't have the money to evacuate, who actually does well, need that's three what cases when of you water? That's what happens when you don't price gouge. I know. Well, yeah, and, but buddy, you wouldn't believe the amount of hatred that I've received by trying to address this. Uh, not that I know anything about dealing with friggin' hurricanes, <clears throat> but because of the way it's the way it's phrased, gouge is is has a, a, a super negative connotation to it because it, it literally means to rend. I believe uh, so. If there's a huge uh, negative connotation to it. Oh, of course there is, and, and that, that's I think not that's the right. The, not, who, who, whoever memed that uh, correctly did it for the socialist, whoever was pushing that, like yeah, that, I, the, the price fixer that wanted that. You know, well, I'm telling you, if for anybody listening, if if you've never been through a, a natural disaster of any kind, gasoline needs to be able to go up to ten dollars a gallon. Okay, water needs to be able to go up to thirty bucks a case. And here's why, because if it's still $2 a case, I'm going to take the bottle of water and I'm going to go wash my truck with it, yeah. or I'm going to wash my dog with it, or I'm going to take a shower with it, or, or just, I'm going to pour it down the drain or water my flowers with it. Or just, or, it, yeah. or just hold it like, like Dave was starting to say before, because yeah, people, you know, I'll use it eventually is, is the last line of rationale, but most people don't even correct. take it. Most people don't even take it that far. They're just thinking you know, in the short term for themselves and whoever else they're taking care of with that water. And that's all they're thinking about. They're not, you know, so yeah, of course, stock up when you well, can. Well, everything is a scarce resource. And, and just because once it's abundant and the demand is steady and it's uh, at a, a pace that everyone is comfortable with, uh, they, they fail to realize that the demand is what sets the price. And when the demand and the price can't move together, bad things happen yeah. and no one wants to confront these 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 non-fuel based realities you know well sure because now the market can't find the proper price for the the proper allocation of a scarce resource i mean this is 101 stuff guys uh, you get it i mean you guys get it you know we get it here but it seems like everybody else doesn't doesn't seem to understand it it's the old card trick to a chicken they, they're like no well that's just being mean Okay, well, yeah, you could be mean, and then I sell out at two bucks a case for water, and then everybody behind whoever bought it gets nothing. Exactly, a hundred, a hundred people come in. There's a you know, hundred cases of water. A hundred people come in, and you know, the first twenty-five people buy all of them. They get all of it, and, and then, then hell, half of those people are selling that water they bought on the black market for a profit. Exactly, right, we see that happen all the time. Swindle. So, so what happens when the, the, the prices are fixed and here in Florida, you have to keep your, your room rate at $55 a night? Well, I've got a, and I'm not making this up. I, I stole this from Tom Woods. Um, you're a family of five, husband and wife, three kids. 
well, hey, at 55 bucks a night, I can afford to go ahead and get two rooms. Put the kids in one room and us in the other, and life is oh, good. Yeah. Right? Well, what if it was $110? Well, in that case, hey, we're all staying in one room. I know it's not perfect, but we can do that for one night. No big deal. Perfect. Guess what? Exactly. Now there's an extra room for the other family. That's how markets find prices that allocate the resources. Dang. I mean, why are we still talking about this? This is not a new concept. It's, it's Well, it's not. It's unreality that they want to force me. They want to gaslight you. You know, like I just looked up gouge uh, in the American uh, lexicon means to swindle. So they're literally thinking people are price swindling. They're well, trying to swindle yeah, people we, out of money we, well, the with whole, their pricing. And, and they don't understand the economic realities of the situation that, you know, like a bar of gold to a guy in the middle of the desert means nothing okay, uh, to the guy who has 10 gallons of water, you know? Mm -hmm. So how much does that bar of gold worth to that, that guy that has no water? Well, about a cup of water. <laughs> yeah, that's the, old, that's the old diamond analogy. You know, how many diamonds would you carry through the desert if somebody was offering water? Well, obviously, you know, you would trade it all. That's what economics is. I mean, it's just a study of the allocation of scarce resources. I, it's because of the fundamental di m either misunderstanding or rejection of understanding that all value, every value of all scarce resources is specific to the individual. Okay. Every individual has a subjective evaluation of everything at a subjective moment in time. Point being the bar of gold water scenario. You know, flip the reverse, the guy's standing in a, a, a pool of water and a guy walks up with a bar of gold. He's going to trade as much water as he can to get that bar of gold. Mm -hmm. So that, that's that's just the realities of things. And this, it's not fair or that's not cool or you'd let someone starve or die or whatever. These are all hypotheticals. Well, of course they are. These are all subjective hypotheticals all, all, that are meaningless. They are might as well not even say them. Well, it's, it's well... I would I would agree that they they don't need to be said, but it's for different reasons. I mean, it's it, I think because you know what you started to say before. I, I think it's more just honest ignorance about the when it comes to the basic economics. Most people really are just honestly mm -hmm. ignorant of these things, because I was for a long time. There, you're not. I would agree with that. You're not. You know, that's not ba even <laughs> basic economics is not really pushed in the in in schools anymore. You know, in the in the elementary and middle and high schools Are anymore. You kidding me? I mean, it was no, barely. It that's was the being, last thing they wanted. It was to be being you. no. I mean, but I remember in my school district they were phasing it out of the curriculum altogether when I was still there. So it's like they used to have it at least. So they at least economics in one lesson should be required reading. Well, yeah, we but, should fight. No. Tooth and nail to get that to be required reading. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really want to involve in a crusade for something like that. I'm calling my local PTA and I'm raising hell. You get on that, Dave. Um, but yeah, no, I think I think a lot of people are just honestly ignorant of that, and all they're ever presented with are the emotional arguments, and most people either. Are, are are actually you know that compassionate and really do want to help people or want to be part of the crowd and want to feel good and want people to like them so they just you know they have to you know i want to i want to fight for these causes too those type of people but in either case it's the same thing so i think it stems from this honest ignorance uh, and it's just because they don't, they don't really know any better, you know, unless you go looking for these things. I mean, I, I know that Dave, you were starting to say, you know, you, you were like that at one time too, you know, before I started looking for this stuff, I didn't know a, a lot of these things, these, just, you know, as Merrick, you were putting just this, these simple concepts we're talking about. I had no idea about a lot well, of Well, you just, you're told stuff that you just accept on face value as well. That sounds about right. Exactly. I'm going to just, I'm going to go with that. Instead of saying, you know what, I'm going to look into everything about that. I want to know the opposite of it. I don't want to know the po the positive. I want to know the negative. I want to know the people that are like, these guys are idiots. I want to know it all. I have to know every angle of it before I can even consider rationalizing it. Well, I think a lot of people just haven't lived through it. And, That's you know, I... They haven't yeah. been duped hard enough to go, I'm done. I'm done sure. with this. Sure. You know, and we, we talk about, you said economics in one lesson, which is a wonderful book, by the way. Henry Hazlitt, if you haven't read it, just 
required reading. Yeah, do, so. do it. It's not that long. 100% <laughs> do it. Uh, it that, takes you know, less than a couple of hours. Yeah, yeah. It, it's almost a pamphlet. That's, that's me being modest. You know, and, and then beyond that, there's a, a million things that you can read, resources, but then, you know, you talk about, well, that should be required in public schools. Well, you know, my take on it is, well, let's strike at the root. There shouldn't be public schools. You know, my, well, of course, my youngest son is, is, is never been in a public school and, and never Lucky will. boy. And every, everything that I see, and, and I understand that I'm not perfect. Does it mean uh, you still couldn't mess with the kids that are in there? You know? No, of course you, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, just to stay on. Not point, my circus, not my monkeys, man. Right, not my circus, not my monkeys. <laughs> um, that. Why would I let them that, mess up? That his monkey's mind gonna be bashing to, your head, your kid over the head with the the state one day. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna have, uh, sit at home every day and try to undo what's been done. We're just not gonna let it be done in the first place. And I told my wife this the other day about marriage, you know, going back, tying this whole thing into a nice little bow uh, about Jonathan. I said, if I had it to do all over again, we would not get married. We would be life partners and I would be just as committed to you as, as we are now. And we've been together for, gosh, I don't even know, almost 20 years. Uh, but we're not getting the state involved. I'm not getting a blood test. I'm not going to a, a justice of the peace. I'm not sign in documents i'm not paying the fee i'm not doing any of those things that we did it'll just be us mm -hmm. and if if the rest of the world says y'all aren't married well hey you know what y'all can go f yourself i don't care yeah just leave me out of it okay y'all go have your circus leave me out of it <laughs> I, i'm with you just the, the unfortunate reality is uh, you know in in quite a few places here in the in the good old ussa even if you refuse to, after a certain time frame, they just decide you're married anyway, for their purposes. No, they do that. You they know. they trap you in. It's it's a common, com law, common law. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Seven years is usually somewhere around the standard. Right. Yeah, it's it's seven years here in Florida well, it's as like well. Six so months. They're going to rope you in. Yeah, you can't get out of it. They will rope you. Yeah, in. but no, I'm 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 totally with you. I've I, I've ever since I came to the realization of all, all that stuff. I mean, that's actually. I think uh, I think what started the problem with my with my ex and I is I figured all this stuff out after I had proposed to her or right before I had proposed to her, but I wasn't gonna like I already had everything all planned out, so I wasn't gonna stop that. Um, but yeah, it kind of just you know changed my whole perspective, and I didn't want to go that route, and that kind of made her really mad. <laughs> yeah, well, if I can take over for just a second. It, it uh, this always comes back to my mind when we have these events like the, the storms, like the hurricane, where I'm spending an entire week, almost two weeks, actually, preparing and going through my list and doing everything that I can do and trying to ask, what have I missed? What have I missed? What do I need to, to get? And stuff I can't get here. I'll order it from Amazon and it's delivered and you're going through it. That's self-sufficiency and it's not that hard. And it's in those times that you realize that there is no one else that you can rely on. Okay, yeah, you can go to the, the FEMA camp if you want to and try to hole up and let them feed you some bologna sandwiches uh, for a few days. But, uh, you know, I saw stories in the news where homeless people were being forced off the streets, like in handcuffs, to shelters. What? What what part of the self ownership you, is bud. that? <laughs> the state owns you, though. Yeah. That's, that's, well, that's that that's exactly the way that they're acting. Uh, in the Virgin Islands, people forgot all about the Virgin Islands. They're worried about Florida. Well, the Virgin Islands are, are a part of the United States. If you're a big statist and you care so much about Houston and you cared about New Orleans after Katrina and all that, well, what about the Virgin Islands? That's the USA. Those people were being forcibly disarmed. Yep. While they were at their most vulnerable, sorry, vulnerable point, um, I'm still struggling with words after the whack to the head. So if I'm slurring, I, I apologize. Uh, and nobody seemed to even care about that. And I'm like, well, what about them? Now they've they've just the roof is off their house. They have no no power. They have no water. Uh, they have no telephone. No communications. A limited supply of food, looters are out, and what do you do to help them? You take away their self-defense. Uh, wh wh where is it that these long-reaching tendrils 
of the state do not reach. And, and my answer to that is, well, really nowhere. There's nowhere you can go. Nowhere. You know? That's why I decided to stay yeah. here. No matter if the hurricane was coming here or going somewhere else, I was going to stay here. It's because just, uh, at least I don't have to worry about all of the externalities of the state and the, the road pirates out there. And, and, you know, they were setting up roadblocks and doing all kinds of nefarious things while the storm was going on. And they're busting, uh, I'm using my scare quotes here, illegals when they try to check into to homeless, or not homeless shelters, but uh, storm shelters. It's like, oh, great. Yeah, here, I'm here for refuge. Okay, well, now you get to go to jail and you're going to get deported. What? Somebody <laughs> please tell me again why this is worth the cost. Uh, I, 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 I can't figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Although, I'm sorry for not, the rant. No, I did not right. mean to go on it's, a rant. But. Oh, it's quite all right. Rant away. The, the, state, the state was forced, though, man. This, this, most people just accept this force. They don't understand it. They don't understand the, even the nature of the cage at all. And that's the problem is they say, oh, well, at least those homeless people didn't die. You know, would you rather them be dead? That's the way they look at it. They don't think of it as. Yeah, it's not like they turned well, them away, I mean, man. I, there wouldn't be homeless people really in private commons. They would be removed. But I. Yeah, the, the, but see, that's kind of a non sequitur because, I mean, you're starting in the middle there saying, well, if, if they. Oh, here I go bumping yeah. the mic again. If they not, had not, not been saying, yeah. had not yeah. been handcuffed and taken to a shelter forcibly, then therefore they would be dead. That's not true, you know. I've watched some of, of these course. knuckleheads that's up their here. Pre crime assumption. Yeah, I mean, we're I'm in the Redneck Riviera. I've I've seen guys here literally. I'm like, the what are you doing? always an assumption. for the hurricane, and they go, I'm gonna tie myself to a tree. Well, okay, probably not the best idea, but you know. You're probably your not going to die either. Yeah, it's it's your body. You do whatever you want. My neighbor did that in Ivan in 2004. He lost his house. I was boarding up my house and doing a lot of preparation, and he leaned over on the fence, and he just watched me work. He's an old guy. And uh, I took a break, and I went over to him, and he said, Hey, you know what? If God wants that hurricane to be gone, it'll be gone in five minutes. That was his plan, and that's that. That's what that's what he did. And I looked at him and I said, "All right. Also, if God wants to send that hurricane up your ass, it'll be here in five minutes," which is exactly what happened. It tore his house down. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. But he was at least free to make that choice. Yeah, and I'm, you know, I'm. Go ahead. I'm, oh no, I was just gonna say I, I'm, I was gonna say yeah. I mean that's exactly the point. You know, you you have that choice if you want to stay there, and you know, I don't get that logic though. Yeah, okay, God could stop. There, it. there was uh, no does logic. It, does it mean he won't? Did you not listen to the story? Your ass out. Did you not listen to the story, no Dave? Logic. Yeah, I was gonna. Did you? Did you even have to ask about logic? <laughs> yeah, it's sadly. Uh, but even missing. by his own logic, though. Even by his own logic, o okay. And <laughs> well, I don't know. Normally, that's, so, that's, normally somebody who takes it to that extreme is base is, is at the point that that they're also willing to die for that same reason. You know. Yeah. God, well, his God's wife will. almost. Yeah, his wife almost did die because she was on uh, oxygen with the oxygen Ooh. generator, and of course, after the storm, there was no power, so there was no oxygen. So she's next door in a collapsed house, suffocating. So he came over and very sheepishly knocked on the door and said, "Hey, uh, can I run a cord over from the from your generator <laughs> to to keep my wife from dying?" And I'm like, "Yeah, it'd probably be a good idea. Let's do that." <laughs> so we did that, and yeah. I'm like, "Dude, what the hell, man? Not you didn't even turn a screw." So yeah, well, I don't know. It's it it's this, this the, the the dependency on the state. It it really becomes obvious when these events come up uh, that everybody says, okay, it'll be fine because uh, the National Guard will show up and protect me or FEMA will be here or there will be just truckloads of, of gasoline and water that magically show up because government. 
Well, and yeah. I'm like, well, not not necessarily. That's not how this works. <laughs> Well, a lot of people, I think, uh, again, I... Yeah, they might be able to handle one, two, three yeah. emergencies. Well, yeah, but I was going to say, I think I think a lot of people, again, it's, I mean, I don't even think a lot of people even think as far as where it comes from as government. They just think, oh, it, it, you know, this stuff is, is put in place and that's, you know, it, it, it's just there. So it will, it will be. I mean, I lived through it with Sandy a couple of years ago. And, mm. you know, when Sandy, that was a big one. Yeah. When Sandy happened, it was like, OK, Katrina wasn't that long ago. Do you all remember what happened during then <laughs> and how mm -hmm. little how little help the government actually was and what they actually did? Although, again, the, the worst atrocities down there, going back to some of the stuff we were talking about before, about how people like don't see this stuff happening. It's because like a lot of this stuff goes very underreported for a reason, you know, like the. uh the uh, disarmament in in uh, and the way they were doing it down in Louisiana, they uh, that wasn't shown a lot. A lot of people didn't know that information. Just like a oh, lot and that was huge, man. That was a big deal. They yeah. they were breaking into locked homes that were undamaged. They would break into the homes, search them, take the weapons out. The weapons were never returned. Some of them were heirloom pieces. Yep. And they were thrown in crates, literally in 55-gallon barrels, stuffed into these Connex boxes and put away for two years. And when they came out, they were just buckets of rust, just destroyed, just like they did in the Virgin Islands uh, here uh, last week. Yeah, wow. and that's yeah, that's what I that's what I was referring to because in, in that in that situation too, like I caught a story on that, but I had to go searching for a while for other things to finally come across some stories on that because again, not widely widely reported. That's another reason that like you know uh, most people most people don't even recognize the, the it's not that they don't recognize that the Virgin Islands is part of the United States. They they they're not given any news about it because <laughs> bad yeah, things just don't bad things don't don't tend to happen there, you know. <laughs> Yeah, they don't, they don't they don't know. But okay, going back to Katrina, uh we had a a waterfront condo in Biloxi, which by the way, New Orleans did not get Katrina, Biloxi did. New Orleans got the back end of it. Uh and I was one of the first people there after Katrina uh to try to secure our whole complex which had roofs torn off and they were all flooded and everything was torn up. And just to get there I had to dodge the National Guard because they were not letting people through. And I'm like, no, you're not going to stop me. And so I drive up to this checkpoint. I'm looking at these 18-year-old kids, and they're in their uh, BDUs, and they're holding you know, uh, M16A1s, which obviously are unloaded, which I knew that. And they're like, you can't go through here. And I'm like, well... I'm going through and your weapons are unloaded and I'm going through. So unless you want to escalate this, then uh, get out of my way. And they're like, well, fuck, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, all right, thanks. Off we go. All right. Thanks. Um, I'll take that as a yes. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Well, they, they were going to take how it. Did, as a how yes did you know they were unloaded? Way. Because they don't allow them to uh, have ammunition. They don't trust them. They, they are not allowed unless uh, I forget what the, uh, Wars. Uh, there, there's a, yeah, there's a level that they can get up to where they'll actually let them load them, but generally no. So they're all walking around with unloaded weapons, and I wasn't. But <laughs> it, it, I mean, it was, it was horrible. There, there were tons of restaurants all around where our condos were, nothing but slabs, and people are trying to get in and out and try to save their stuff and save their homes and at least reclaim whatever was left and maybe dry it out and salvage what they can. And agents of the state were basically standing there uh, at the road, stopping them from doing so. Yeah. And what is their, what is their justification for that? Well, there could be looting in there. Well, all you're doing is keeping the homeowners out and whoever's in there can do whatever in the heck they want. Well, well once we I got down on the beach, get shot. Oh. once I got on the beach, all of us that were there, and there were probably six of us, we were all very heavily armed, you know, and, and honest, good people with, you know, guns and flashlights, and that's it, uh, just taking care of their property. 
making sure nothing happens. But they were trying to do their dead level best to make sure that nobody could get in and do that. And that happened during Wilma. I'm sure that, Jeremy, you saw it during Sandy. Yep. It's happening right now uh, in South Florida. Merritt Island, it's happening. Marco Island, it's happening. Coco, uh, Miami Beach, it's happening. They're not letting people in. People who have their entire fortunes sitting there in the water, and they're not, not even letting them in. And I'm yeah. like, yep, here, here, have some government. Yeah, making sure, making sure whatever oh. didn't get destroyed with the storm has uh, a, a sufficient time to get even further destroyed. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> let's let's make sure we get some black mold on it. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. Venezuela's new dear leader has a. Uh, oh, Mr. Ham plan to the fix segment. it. Oh, what's that? Fix what? He has a plan to fix the hungry, hungriness, the hungry, hungry Venezuelas. And, oh, uh, I'm like, what are you Venezuelans talking about? You're just, we're talking about. I just saw this headline. They're trying to breed didn't talk, rabbits. Did we, didn't we talk to about you Venezuela? Not, didn't we talk about you not reading, <laughs> the, reading the reading the internet while we're? <laughs> it's just so ludicrous that they're trying to breed rabbits to save Venezuela. Like they think that that state planned. It's just well, like this, they think it's a good idea stuff and the price regulations are going to work. It's the same thing. We live under a socialist state. It's just a varying degree. Well, yeah, but I mean, again, the, the that I mean, breeding rabbits is not a bad idea for a source of meat. <laughs> however, no, it's, however, government being in charge of, you know, it's actually it just, it's actually it's one of the things I plan on doing. The RK I, selective theory just to just <laughs> once I get to once, uh, once I get to my my uh, hopeful uh, farmland. Um, I uh, I plan on you know breeding rabbits when is for that exact happening? purpose. I I I don't know, man. I'm <laughs> it's uh it's kind of a you know I'm getting close to uh, being done with with work, so I'm going to be unemployed in a couple of weeks, and uh, I still have to sell my house. I still have to finish my stuff with the court case, and uh, I still have to find a place to go that mostly as contingent on my ex landing uh work yeah so a lot of things up in the air and uh you know well panic mode starting to set in just keep putting <laughs> the stuff in in motion to make it happen and it, it should happen well yes th th thank you tony robbins um well, no, <laughs> i um you're welcome buddy i i watch <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. That caught me off guard. That was funny. <laughs> uh, it got me too. The uh, uh, the the reality is, unfortunately, there's so many variables currently, and so many things up in the air that it's kind of like I can't move on a lot of things. I would like to move on, so uh, I just kind of have to wait until at the very least I'm done with work, and then secondly, done with this court case. Uh, but yeah, and uh, anyway, so yeah, I'm. Uh, starting to get that panic mode it's fun it's great it's exciting uh it, it should hopefully motivate me to do more but you know again it's not, not, everything's not contingent on me so that always makes it a little more difficult you know if we're just well, about, if, yeah. if it was just about relocating myself and finding work somewhere else like i'm sure i could probably do that relatively easily um although i may be blacklisted yeah. in certain industries uh and certain places um i don't think i'm blacklisted in all of them so it's uh, well it really makes you when you get put into these situations it really tunes you in uh I, I, and i'm trying to tie all of this together but it, i'm not directly trying to equate your situation to a hurricane but in a, in a lot of ways it's very similar the, my life absolutely it, yeah, it, it, <laughs> yeah your life it's a hurricane uh but it like it, it does too. really make you focus in on all right what is absolutely important and what is not and at least for me it shows me what the spontaneous order of things really does uh just like today with the with the people at the 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 shopping uh the the grocery store rather uh you can see everybody is stressed because they're being pressed really hard and they're really on edge just like you are man you're like it's do or die right now you know in or out off or on where where are we right now and sometimes you just have to break that ice a little bit and go all right guys it's going to be cool you know i forget who said it but somebody this is like one of those 
quotes, it's always attributed the, to Mark Twain that he didn't actually say, but he said that if you see 10 troubles coming down the road, chances are that nine of them will run off into a ditch before they get to you. Hmm. And yeah, yeah, I know. And it sounds kind of simplistic and sophomore, but in a way it's not because in my life, I've always seen that these troubles have always been coming at me. This hurricane was just another one of those things. It, it wasn't anything spectacular to me. It was just another obstacle that I'm looking at. And mm -hmm. sure enough, it was one of the nine of 10 that just ran off the road before it got to me. Yeah. Uh, this thing that we're looking at with Jonathan. Uh, now, I don't know how that's going to go. I'm not going to predicate that, but uh, it very well could be that maybe that's going to be another one of those things that we spend more time worrying than we do preparing. If you spend 90% of your time preparing, the other 10%, you don't have to spend worrying. And I'm not speaking to you, Jeremy, directly, but just in, I'm talking in, in generalities. I hope you get that. But the, the reason that people are always jumping to the state as the solution to whatever the problem is, is because they miss the six P's. Okay. That's a, that's a military saying. Pit, uh, piss. Oh, shit. Let me try again. <laughs> Proper. <laughs> sorry, my brain is still not working right, guys. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Hmm. And if you've done the proper prior planning, then the rest of it just becomes, you know, a cakewalk. It's gravy. You don't have to worry about it because you've already done the preparation that it takes to, to deal with it. And I don't care whether that's a divorce or whether that's a death in the family or whether it's a hurricane or whether it's a move or whether it's anything. It's all the same thing proper prior planning. And if we could really focus on that and get rid of these negative externalities that we focus on, then we could focus on preparing our lives and our families in our future to not have to worry about it so that when the, the heat gets really turned on, we're ready for it and we can just go to town on it. Sorry, that's another rant, but what the hell? <laughs> uh, you guys know me. That's what I do. I'm sorry. No, it's yeah. fine. You don't have to apologize, man. Uh, they're uh, they're worth listening to, in my opinion. <laughs> no, it's Merrick Van Landingham's opinion is always warranted. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for that. <laughs> in, 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 in my world, sometimes I feel like fucking Fred Phelps with a megaphone. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> oh, am man. I becoming that guy? Jeez, no, no, that was a joke. That was a joke, people. You need to joke, people. I don't hate gays. Off and just. Yeah, you need to just I'm, mask off and just go full, you know, Murray Rothbard libertarian. Just boom. Well, I'm pretty much there, man. I was reading some uh, Hans Hermann Hoppe today just as a, well, uh, a way to, to calm down. Yeah, uh, Democracy, the God that Failed. What a great book. Because I'd listened to uh, Tom Woods talking about how people, he was on with Stephen Kinsella talking about how people are hating mm -hmm. on Triple H. And I'm like, yeah, most of those people have never read a single fucking word that he wrote. You know, 40 oh, years yeah, of writing, sure. and they'll take one sentence or one paragraph, and they're like, aha, see right there, this guy's all right. He's a Nazi. <sighs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, why don't you, while you're at it, let's talk about price gouging, you moron. <laughs> oh, at the end of the day, I don't know what they would say about me what this guy is what is anybody gonna say about you at the end of the day brother <laughs> i don't know yeah oh i dude, hope at the end dude. of the day people go ah i don't know i just don't know i was mad that facebook made me put my last name on there i really i i honestly didn't even want to go by my you know like by my name uh so i hate it i don't that's why, like my my name's been Dave the entire time on this show, dude. Uh, that that's one of the the ways that I think I'm a little bit different than than everybody else, especially in the uh, fuck. I'm gonna say it. The movement. Ooh, I feel like I need to good. take a dump. Yeah, it was a joke. I've always put my name on everything that I've done or said. It's my real name, no pseudonym, nothing. It, it's just this is what I think, and I, I'll put my name on it, and. I've never had any pseudonyms or 
you know, sock accounts or anything else. It's just like, yeah, here I am. If you don't like it, you can go take a long walk off a short pier. I really don't care. Yeah. And, and strangely I don't know, it's enough, it's just been a thing where I don't, I just don't want any recognition or anything like that. I just don't. Oh, care no, I don't that. give a crap about recognition. But strangely enough, I'm one of the very few people who's never been banned by Zuckerberg. Whew, and I've okay. said some really, really edgy stuff. You have. Stuff, you know, I talk about cops a lot, uh, talk about war, talk about the military, uh, military industrial complex, anti-government stuff all the time. I've never been zucked, but everything that I've ever done is under my real name and I could, I'll, I'll sign it, man. I don't care. Um, well, I, I've, I'm, I'm on the one where if I catch another ban, it'll be a, it'll be a month long ban. It'll be a 30 day ban. If that happens, I'm just going to somehow sit down and compose a monster post because what they're doing now is they've banned uh, Daniel Quillen off of Facebook and they've banned. Yeah, they've they banned, did. They've just they've he just was edgy, out, uh, just well, they've just about banned um, Jared Howe off of Facebook as well. Uh, and but, it's like, yeah, but they're, you can they're daring. disagree with somebody, they're but like, daring him, why but. are they? I don't know. People well, like no, that they are, banned him, and then they banned him for the same I, post I, I know, when he got unbanned. We've been over this. People like that are, are are actually trying to dare Facebook to do it to him at this point because of the precedent they already set with others. So, like, you know, it, it's I, kind I'm of I'm tired inevitable. of walking on eggshells, I'm, so I, I'm kind I, of I'm not at, saying at it's, the point where I just, I'm afraid to say anything that I really, truly want to get across because... I feel like even if it's a thing, once that eye of Sauron, so so to speak, is on you, you're just gonna they're gonna start pulling through everything that you've ever said and they're gonna be ha, let's get him for this. And you're just you're you're gonna be banned. Wow. And That's... they're gonna ban you because they make you put a photo ID on there. As soon as you try to make a new account, you're they're gonna say we need a photo ID because they're gonna it's gonna hit with an IP. So basically Facebook is killing themselves by a literal forced echo chamber that they're creating. Well, I don't know if they're killing themselves necessarily because they have, I mean, how many billion? Well, I mean, of course, they have they all have? these DOD contracts and all this, but you know, like the news is going to be running while the apocalypse is going and they're going to be saying nothing's wrong, everything's fine, take your well butrin or whatever. Like, that's <laughs> Facebook's still going to be, it's like MySpace is still going, but no one uses it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but it's so. Yeah, they're not. I, I mean, sure, eventually um, they they'll shoot themselves in the foot. But in the short term, no, it's not really like it's I mean, it's ma it's making their broader base happier because the way it's being couched that these people like things are being you know people are being uh, removed and the majority of the people don't actually get to see the the the, the alleged uh, you know objectionable con uh, content. They're just told stories of it and it just they get headlines just like with anything else. And they're just convinced that was these evil. That these people were downright evil. And oh, they, dude, that they I can were, tell when I make a new sock on Facebook and start posting, it'll just get so many, so much attraction and 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 interactions and shares and stuff. And then, boom, the hand, the the the, the clamps get put down. And uh, that really doesn't happen with certain socks preaching certain messages. And that's that's what's really weird, and some well, things that I've noticed. So I I just. No, I, I, I got just you. just know that they're out for certain people that are saying. Well, certain no, things. so yeah, no, I I understand. And, and that. What did Voltaire say? What did Voltaire say though? Who in the hell in what the last the hundred years has read Voltaire? Nobody. What is Voltaire's lesson though? <laughs> what? Which to what? see who rules over you? Yeah. See who you cannot criticize. Criticize? Yeah, I understand that. But no, I, it's but but to, I mean yeah, and I, I get that Dave. But to, to Merrick's uh, original point about this, I mean I, I'm I mean I've, I'm obviously the same way. I ran under my my uh, my actual name the entire time I've been on social media, and that still hasn't changed <laughs> despite what happened to me. Um, I did make you know my post went uh, just to friends for a few months after the fact, but I'm back to posting publicly again, still under my still under the same name. <laughs> You know, haven't changed anything. And uh, for, for a lot of the same reasons you were talking about. All these Mary. people that have all these beliefs that they don't talk about, especially online, it the future is going to be more open. You know how like when everyone's, uh, no, when no one has privacy, you know, everyone's private, you know, so to say. Uh, no, 
I have no I idea. I can't think of saying. the analogy right now. Well, well, um, I mean, we, we can we can look at what happened to you, Jeremy, is is a good analogy. Um, yeah, what's a nationwide witch hunt? Literally. <laughs> Literally. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And it happens. Like when it, ABC it, Chicago and New York. It happens. It happens to people every day, and uh, you know, yeah. I just finally get. You know, I've heard story. You know, you hear stories of it and stuff, and I just actually got sucked up in it. <laughs> yeah, but it's so. It, it's just proof. You know, now we have firsthand experience that we can talk about how disingenuous. You know, people talk about fake news or or things of that nature. Well, now we have firsthand. Uh, experience of, of of exactly how disingenuous they really are, and that's why I've kind of backed away from all of it. Oh, I have but too. <laughs> e- even even when it comes to to that, when I have an opinion, I'll still say it on social media. I do Twitter, I do Facebook, I do Instagram, I do all the same stuff that you guys do. Uh, but I've just decided that I'm gonna I'm gonna speak my mind, and I'm gonna say exactly what I think. And my job is to challenge you to think, you know, I'm, I'm going to make you think. And if that hurts your feels or if that rustles your jimmies, then, OK, maybe I'll get banned or something like that. And I'll go away. I don't I don't care. But I'm not hiding behind anything. Uh, anybody in this world, if you if you Google my name right now, it'll show you a, a Google map pin drop right to the top of my house. You can find me. It'll show you my phone number because my business is attached to it. You can find out everything you need to know. So anybody that wants to come find me, you can. And all right, fine. I I just, I really don't care. But I'm just not really comfortable hiding behind uh, any kind of uh, nom de plume or nom de guerre or pseudonym or whatever you want to call it. Uh, Yeah. This is me and this is what you get. And if you don't like it, you can go away. And if you really it's, don't like it. It's not it, even that for me. Like It's, it's like I, I think when people know who's saying stuff, when they know who's saying it, it adds a layer of bias that they can judge the words. Well, that, 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 that is just the words absolutely that true. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And I, and I try so to like stay a, away a from a the confirmation rapist, bias. A pedophile rapist could say taxation is theft. Taxation is theft is true, but when people go, well, that's a pedophile rapist saying it, they go, well, I don't know. Are you well, calling me a pedophile know. rapist? I mean, yeah, I think that I was know. the implication. I mean, that's um, what I got out of it. <laughs> <laughs> what the, what? I you come on I'm as saying, a guest though. and like 45 minutes in, now I'm a pedophile rapist. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, that's not what I was implying at all. No, I was just that's saying. a joke. Folks, um, it's a joke. Just relax. But yeah. nah, That's, you know, I, I like shooting it straight. I like being really, uh, you know, A to B, straightforward. Uh, I, I don't even know how to how to put a bow on this thing. But you know, when, when it comes to the storm stuff, to all of the the hype, the uh, the hype attached to it, uh, with everything that's been going on in our circles over the last year, I just like being very straightforward and honest. And we'll we'll take it on as it comes. And I don't know. Uh, yeah. it, it just seems like everybody else wants to dance circles around it. I'm like, no, nah, don't do that. <laughs> you know, attack. Well, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think that's probably the best approach. But yeah, more. more I, don't, I don't. I don't know how many people actually want to do it. But whatever, man. I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, we actually are getting pretty close to an hour, so we should probably get wrapping up. Um, but yeah, uh, once again, Merrick, thank you. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight. This was this was great, uh, especially because it looks like we lost Andre pretty early on, and he never returned. So <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. But no, uh, hey, it happens, man. In yeah, a, I don't know. I, I guess he internets. had a, a he got completely droned. He got Zuckerberg in real life or something. I don't know. Well, he was he was definitely having internet issues when he first uh, logged on. When it was just him and I for the first like ten minutes, he was dropping in and out a lot. So yeah, he was, wasn't he? Yeah, that's I think he, I think he was having a lot of issues tonight. So it worked out. For, it worked out well. Then Merrick, man, thank America. you so much for coming on. Man, thank you guys for having me on. And I wish Andre could have stayed. You know, uh, I, I I love that guy like a brother. So you know, he's a good guy. He's a great but, guy. You yeah, know, I'm I'm sorry if I ranted too much. No, man, it was perfect. Just try to add something to the conversation if I can. No, 
It was perfect. I don't get to get behind a microphone very much anymore. So I know. Well, I you know, well, yeah. Well, unless you're going to take Dave's advice and go solo, you know, I guess it uh, may be a little while before you guys get start doing stuff again, right? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Unfortunately, time time will tell, brother. We'll see. Well, all right. So, all right. Well, we we will be closing out then. Uh, Thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, This has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast. All of our information can be found at solpodcast.org. And uh, we will catch you next time. Peace. 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 Make sure to drink filtered water. <laughs> Need that Berkey filter. The Central Scrutinizer is a Soviet-style leviathan trying to keep track of all you do. That's why I use a VPN or virtual private network from Bola VPN. Bola VPN is inexpensive, secure, and will allow you to use your computer without leaving a trail. Bola VPN is now also offering torrent seed boxes for safely sharing media with the world. And if you open a support ticket saying you heard about them from the Freedom Fiends, they'll add three extra days free. That's Bola VPN at B-O-L-E-H-V-P-N dot net. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com.